I'll never forget the time my student Bobby came into lessons looking really excited. And I was like, what's going on? You know, I was curious. And he's like, well, for the last week, I've been learning how to play songs with this game called Rocksmith. And he just kept going on and on about this program. And I was like, okay, that's cool. Uh, let's plug in. I want you to play something you learned from the program for me so I can hear it. And he's like, all right. So we sat down, he went to plug in and uh, he went to play the song. And I remember him making a few mistakes. Suddenly he didn't look as excited. He looked a little more frustrated. He tried again. He was like closing his eyes, really trying to focus. And he just couldn't play anything. And so he opens his eyes and he starts laughing. He goes, Mike, I honestly think I need the screen in front of me in order to play any of these songs right now. That's when I coined it the Bobby effect. Uh, I guess a more scientific name would be something like uh, performer screen dependency syndrome. We can call it PSDS maybe, people love their acronyms. And I realized that this could become a huge epidemic just because technology just keeps rolling on, it's in infused in everything that we do these days. And I thought, you know what, it's not just guitar students trying to learn guitar watching a screen, but it also translates over to people playing on stage, actual live musicians relying on some sort of technology in order to play their parts. It's just way too easy these days to bring a phone or an iPad on stage as a reference point. I was really surprised at the comments I was getting back on my Musician Metallica course review that I did. A lot of people were saying something I didn't expect. They were saying, you know what? I realized after watching your video that I suffer from this Bobby effect and I didn't even know it. I would just play along, feel good because I got through the song on the screen and I went along with the rest of my day. I never even thought that this could come back to haunt me someday. So for my review, I actually tried the program out for the first time and I really enjoyed it. You know, the novelty of it is great at first. It kind of gets you hooked. Uh, but that's kind of the problem. After a while, I felt like I was becoming dependent on the uh, screen going by with the tab in order for me to play the songs that were in front of me. Another weird side thing that happened was that I was getting a little bit dizzy trying to watch all the numbers go by as it side scrolled. I thought I'd be okay because I grew up playing side scrolling video games, but for some reason, adding the guitar playing with it and trying to focus on every number just made me feel a little bit nauseous towards the end. But that wasn't the worst part. Watching a screen the whole time as I played made me feel disconnected from the guitar. So instead of focusing on the guitar and making music, I was watching a screen go by and I was trying to make everything sound perfect by following the numbers that were going by. So I didn't feel like a genuine musician playing an instrument. I felt more like a robot in a way trying to play music. I guess I'm pretty lucky that I grew up when I did because if we had the technology we have now, I'd be in huge trouble because I love video games and I love guitar. So I know that I would have loved the fusion of the two together and I would have went really far down that road and I would have been completely taken by the Bobby effect. But we had these bulky tab books. You've probably seen my tab videos where I make fun of the bad tab. We had a lot of that going on. We had magazines and it just didn't feel right to play a Slayer song, let's say, and flip pages as you're doing it. It just didn't seem like something a rock musician should be doing or a metal musician. So a book that I had back then was Satriani Flying in a Blue Dream, and I just didn't want to be playing a solo of his and all of a sudden, hold on, gotta flip the page, because it was just such a buzzkill. So a lot of us musicians from my era had no choice but to memorize all the music that they played because you didn't want to be the person flipping through a book, like I said. So like I said, the Bobby effect doesn't just affect guitar players trying to learn on a computer. It's also for performers who play on stage. And I remember one time my heart tribute band was playing with another classic rock tribute band. And they started and they sounded really good, but I remember watching the band and going, something weird is going on up there. We were kind of far back. I noticed the whole band was rocking out, except for the singer who also played guitar. He was just kind of standing there. So I went up closer to the stage and I noticed that he was looking down at an iPad that was attached to his mic stand. And so it really hit home when I realized that the rest of the band did not have any type of screen dependency going on. And they were looking at each other, smiling, rocking out, but the singer was zeroing in on his iPad the entire time and he looked really stiff, almost like a mannequin was leading the band. And it just took away from the overall exciting vibe that the rest of the band had. Watch, I'll probably find out he has some weird brain injury and he can't memorize anything, I'll feel bad. But I'm just using him as an example to make my point for this video.
I mean, I used to have young students try to bring their phones on stage in order to follow the lyrics. And uh, I always told them that they actually had to memorize the lyrics. They weren't allowed to bring any devices on stage to follow. And uh, they would get a little bit mad at me at first because, I mean, they were so young, they were practically born with a phone in their hands. But uh, after they did memorize the lyrics and they felt the freedom of not having to look at a screen the whole time, they actually thanked me for it later. I mean, here's a quick example. I saw this video the other day of a young band playing blue suede shoes, which I thought was really cool to see a young band playing Elvis. But watch the singer. She keeps looking down at her phone while she sings. And uh, I don't know the situation. Maybe they played the song at the last minute and uh, she just had to reference something. But I think what probably really happened is they just didn't have a really mean teacher like me forbidding them from using their phones on stage. I don't know. It's just my opinion that as a musician, our job is to memorize music as much as we possibly can. I know there are people like Axl Rose and even Paul McCartney that use teleprompters on stage. I think Paul said it's because when he goes into the Beatles songs, he kind of goes into autopilot and it's easy to get lost when you're in that mode. I'd much rather see a singer make a mistake with the lyrics uh, than read a teleprompter. So for example, I saw James Hetfield mess up the lyrics to one on the Howard Stern show. Check this out. But do you see how much of a pro he is? Even though if you know the song really well, it's kind of funny to see him sing those lyrics, but he just rolled through it like a professional. You know, you kind of have to be able to roll through the uh, mistakes when you've played thousands of shows, you just become really good at doing that. So to me, the mistake feels more authentic overall than if he just sang all the lyrics perfect while reading them off screen. That just wouldn't feel the same. It's just too easy to get that newscaster vibe. You know what I'm talking about? When you're watching the news and you can tell they're reading off of a teleprompter. Uh, I always thought about what my videos would be like if I actually read cue cards instead of just going from the heart like I always do. I think it would be something like this. Hello everyone, this is Mike from The Art of Guitar. Today we will be learning the holiest of all chords, the G sus chord. Pause for laughter. Now I'm exaggerating, of course. Some people get really good at reading teleprompters, but uh, I always feel like my videos will have a more authentic feel. I mean, obviously, if I just go from the heart, even though there's a lot of mistakes that I make that I have to edit out later, I really like to just say what I'm really feeling and thinking. Some people will bring up orchestras and band, you know, when they have to read sheet music and they do a fine job, you know, they're able to pull it off. And I was an orchestra, so I completely understand. We used to have to play so many different songs, they would cycle through all the time, that it was the only feasible thing was to use sheet music and have everybody follow that so that we're as a group able to play any song in a short amount of time. But when I finally was able to do a solo in the middle of one of our pieces, I had to stand up and everything and play. I remember I practiced it so many times that I memorized it. And then I was like, you know what? I, why am I looking at this piece of paper? And I put it aside and I started to practice without it. And that was the first time I really felt the freedom of playing the violin without being a slave to the staff, if you will. And I believe it translated to over to the audience because it felt better. I felt more free when I played and uh, they seemed to enjoy it. You know, they could have just been being Minnesota nice to me because I was just a kid, but uh, I genuinely feel like it sounded and felt better both to hear and to play. And one last example of when I experienced the Bobby effect, I had to sing and play guitar for over 50 songs at one gig and I rehearsed like crazy. I have some memorizing tricks that I use to memorize lyrics. I'll teach that in another future video. But as I was going to the show, I looked at the set list and realized that I had forgotten to memorize the lyrics to one of the songs that we were gonna play that night. So as soon as I got to the gig, I flipped the set list over and I wrote out all the lyrics to the song. I thought, you know what? It should be okay just for one song to have to read the lyrics, no problem. But when we got to the song and I tried to do it, it was pure hell for me. Because I remember looking at the first verse, singing it after I read it, playing the guitar at the same time, and all of a sudden looking down for the second verse. And I got confused because I hand wrote the whole thing out, so it was kind of sloppy. But I wasn't able to find my place. I lost where I was. You ever do that when you're reading, you're, let's say reading an actual book, and all of a sudden you're like, wait, where, where was I? Oh, right here. That happened to me on stage and I panicked. My mind went blank. I totally sounded robotic and I actually had to repeat the first verse again. So I got through it, but I remember afterwards going, I will never do that again, even though it was a mistake and it was an oversight. I'm like, I'm gonna try to never have to do that again. I'm gonna memorize everything from now on. 
Now, sure, with a lot of repetition, I'm sure I could have gotten pretty good at reading and conveying the lyrics, you know, simultaneously over time. But whenever I see somebody who's really good at doing that, let's say with teleprompters, I always wonder how much better they would sound and feel if they didn't have to do that. So let's just bring this full circle now. And uh, I just want to express the reason I'm making this video is so that anybody out there suffering from the Bobby effect uh, can figure it out now instead of at the worst time. Like, let's say you're trying out for a band and uh, you're going to play and all of a sudden you realize that you really can't play play up to your best ability without a screen. That'd be a terrible place to figure this out. You know, the people that commented on that musician video, some of them wrote back again and told me that now they're actually trying to memorize how to play instead of being screen dependent. And they're feeling that freedom now and they're loving it. It's like they have a brand new way to experience the guitar. And it's really cool to see that happening. And one last bit of good news. Somebody told me that Rocksmith actually has something called master mode. I think it was Rocksmith where they take away the visuals and then you have to try to play it without looking at the screen. So I feel like that's uh, hope for the future and I'm glad the tech world is even realizing this problem. And don't worry about Bobby. You know, some people were concerned that he would feel bad that I would name this syndrome after him, but uh, he's a real laid back, easygoing guy. He just laughed about it. He's like, you know what? I'm actually honored. That's kind of cool. So I'd be really curious to see how you all feel about screen dependency. Maybe it doesn't matter to you. Maybe if you went and saw a band and they're all staring at phones the whole time, it doesn't matter. Maybe I'm just an old guy with old fashioned values. Who knows, it's very possible, but uh, I'd like to see how you feel about it. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching and we'll catch you at the next video. Bye-bye.